Grofers joining us on the show uh, to really talk about uh, Grofers' own future as far as the space is concerned. Um, Albinder Dhinsa, the co-founder and CEO of Grofers, joins us exclusively on ET Now Startup Central. Albinder, thank you so much for uh, joining us here. You know, the biggest question on everyone's minds. PepperTap has been forced to shut uh, uh, grocery delivery operations. What is Grofer's future going to be? Because your business model is not too different uh, from PepperTap. So really, uh, you know, uh, take us through that. So look, I mean, uh, uh, this is going to be a competitive market for the next few years at least. Uh, this is one of the biggest sort of opportunities uh, in consumer internet. Uh, which is primarily related to you know a 600 billion dollar market that is grocery led and that forms a major chunk of every uh, indian's wallet share uh, so uh, i think you're going to see a lot more consolidation in the market a lot more updates from different uh, actors in building up different business models the way we sort of see it is that you know we need to uh, sort of keep executing the things we are doing uh, provide value to the customers uh, and at the same time, fill in the holes in the value in the supply chain that can help create value for not only the brands that we are working with, but also with the retailers. Uh, and eventually, that is something that is going to be valuable for the consumer. So really, I mean, we, out of necessity, we have to make sure that we are always taking a very, very long view on what we are building, uh, execute really fast, learn really fast from our mistakes, others' mistakes, and just sort of keep moving on. Alminder, this is uh, Krishna coming to you from uh, ET Now's uh, Mumbai studios. Uh, you know, a simple question from me. Does the fact that uh, you have funding from the likes of uh, SoftBank uh, help you uh, considering, uh, you know, this, uh, this, uh, this business uh, is finding it difficult uh, when it comes to unit economics? So, I mean, almost all our investors, uh, including Tiger and Yuri and Sequoia, they have a, they have a tremendous track record of backing companies in the Indian ecosystem in specific. Uh, and I think they all understand the Indian ecosystem a lot better. They understand that companies here are built over a longer period of time. They're not sort of built in a two, three year horizon. Uh, and I think they've seen sort of enough uh, up and down cycles globally as well as in India that um, I think it's actually great to have a very steady uh, set of investors who really sort of look at the bigger picture, look at the longer term and don't sort of prioritize uh, short-term things. Steady set of investors, Albinder, but the reality of the space is that uh, companies end up losing, you know, um, money hand over fist because it has poor unit economics. Uh, the amount taken to deliver per order is far higher than the order value itself. So what is the future of the space going to be? Actually, the the segment doesn't uh, the segment doesn't really have poor unit economics. It actually has pretty good uh, margins. Uh, it's just that grocery business is a mass market business. It is something that uh, globally operates on volumes, right? So you're not going to make a 40, 50 percent margin like uh, fashion does, but you're going to always be operating on much thinner margins. But unlike fashion over here, the transaction is much more frequent. The volume of transactions is a lot more higher. To give you scale, I think you know we. Uh, uh, we reached uh, 30,000 daily transactions uh, in a matter of less than one year, something which in the Indian ecosystem not a lot of other segments are able to accomplish. However, this also requires a much more focused supply chain because uh, unlike uh, higher margin products which have their own issues, they have returns, they have a lot of other things, over here getting the consumers, uh, the products a lot quickly, ensuring quality, all that stuff, that matters a lot. So in cases, you have to build a more bespoke supply chain, which is what our primary focus is. How do you build a supply chain that can profitably deliver these products to the consumer and not only profitably deliver, but also deliver value to the consumers? You don't want to sort of build a supply chain which is supplying things at a higher price to the consumer. That doesn't make any business sense. But what we are able to accomplish through our own supply chain uh, and working with a lot of retailers and brands is actually make the supply chain, existing supply chain a lot more shorter, a lot more efficient. The end result is you can actually provide consumers with better prices. <clears throat> At the same time, uh, we are also sort of changing their buying habit from buying offline to online, right? Uh, which is a part of a broader shift of consumer buying behavior from the offline world to the online world. So I think what you will see uh, a lot of players, at least in the grocery segment, try to do is focus a lot more on the supply chain side of things. 
because when you're working with slower margins but very high volume you want to make sure that you are actually executing really well that your supply chain is working very very efficiently all right uh, that was uh, quite a detailed uh, view from you alvinder on how to improve the unit economics but you know you recently moved to the uh, inventory model uh, uh, in few categories like fruits and vegetables uh, isn't there a downside uh, because of the recent fdi norms that uh, don't allow fdi and inventory led uh, uh, startups uh, so look, i mean we are we primarily work with uh, retailers in the ecosystem uh, so as such the fdi norms do not impact us i mean we work with uh, most major retailers uh, most major high street retailers like reliance fresh srs hypercity uh, so we are a, a true marketplace in that sense uh, what we are more focused on is actually figuring out how do we provide value added services to these retailers so they can actually build more efficient uh supply chain how they can how we can get extra value from brands that we can then share with these retailers so uh, the fdi uh, norms like is something that actually doesn't have a real impact on us alvinder uh, a few specifics if you can share on you know the kind of growth that you are witnessing in terms of uh, daily orders the traction uh, that you're really seeing here so i mean we are uh, i mean although as a company we are a lot older we were doing a lot of logistics business before but last january is when we really sort of got into the business of uh, you know delivering uh, groceries directly to consumers uh, since then like uh, now we on a average day we do something like 30000 orders and uh, most of that uh, is in the grocery space itself and uh, i mean this growth has come over a 14 15 month period we have over 2 million downloads Uh, on Google Play and and iOS and over uh, 400,000 active buying customers every month good to know that uh, alvinder uh, but uh, you also shut down in a few cities uh, uh, and across the country tell us how has that helped you uh, in terms of operating more efficiently actually uh, we shut those operations almost 6 months ago now <laughs> however um, the uh philosophy behind shutting those cities was some of them are actually uh, doing decently well for us but we simply did not have the management bandwidth to be able to concentrate on those cities as well right so it was more a question of can we actually visit those cities every two months uh, who uh, do we have enough bandwidth to be able to do uh, our top 17 cities and an additional nine cities which we did not uh, however we are looking to restart back at least in ludhiana and bhuvneshwar very soon uh, so two of the cities that we had previously shut down Uh, so we should be back in those cities within the next couple of quarters you know alvinder we had uh, amazon's in, uh, india management uh, last week and uh, he was pretty optimistic about the hyper local space so how do you really compete with an amazon now uh, which is not constrained by capital how do you compete with a gorilla like that going forward look uh, i mean we will have to compete with amazon on on uh, you know uh, things that we can do well which is build great tech uh, build a great supply chain give great uh, consumer service uh, if amazon comes in and just because of their deep pockets they are able to beat us uh, then there is hardly anything that we can do about it but uh, i'm pretty sure that it is not it is not as trivial as saying that uh, for them just because they'll be able to spend money uh, that you know they will win uh, so we will obviously try to do the things that we do well and uh, you know we'll wait and see if capital is really a game changer in that uh, situation all right talminder one last thing uh, before we let you go tell us about the road ahead uh, you know in terms of uh, your uh, focus areas over over the next uh, few months uh, uh, time horizon so i mean we are really focused around uh, really just building up our supply chain uh, because uh, as we've grown Uh, a lot of the issues that have come up in terms of fulfillment and getting the orders to the customers in time most of them are actually related to a very fragmented and and uh, sort of very archaic supply chain that we deal with for grocery specifically in india uh, so our our primary focus is actually overhauling that for our own purposes um, so we are actually working with a lot of retailers trying to bring them more into a, uh, on on a, uh, in more into the technology side of things where they are not only tracking their inventory using the tech that we provide them but they're also you know uh, doing a lot of the offline billing that they're doing uh, through our platform itself 
uh, and actually becoming a lot more smarter about you know how are the items going to be bought instead of operating purely in a cash economy going to a southern market and buying items and then reselling them to consumers uh, actually trying to bring them uh, more into a more formal setup uh, and also at the same time helping them uh, with the supply chain issues that they face because of which they have to go to the cash economy uh, so that is really our only focus area at this point of time uh, we know that there is a huge market to be built out there we also know that this is not a battle that is going to last for only a couple of years uh, so we would rather compete on uh, a superior customer experience provided by a very robust supply chain over anything else find us on facebook at facebook.com/etnow and don't forget to click the like button you can also follow us on twitter at @etnow live to stay updated with all our programming hit the subscribe button on our youtube channel by logging on to youtube.com/user/etnow